from the Tie Cats Audio Network. This is Tie Cats Today with Braden Neville. Hello and welcome to another episode of Tie Cats Today here on the Tie Cats Audio Network on this Wednesday, July the 12th, 2023. No practice for the Tie Cats today. They're traveling to Edmonton for that game tomorrow night. The Tie Cats are looking to capture their second win in six days against an Edmonton team that has yet to win a game this season and is looking to avoid their 20th straight home loss, which is a league record. On today's show, we will have Malik Carney, David Beard, who will be making his return to Edmonton to play against his former team for the first time in Edmonton. Chris Edwards, who also spent some time with the Elks, and I had a great long chat with James Butler that you don't want to miss. I spoke to JB about his journey to the CFL, what he does on his spare time, and for the first time, he shared why he changed his number to the number nine this season. An awesome chat, and we will get to all that in just a bit, but first we will get to some news around the team. The Ticats released their depth chart for tomorrow game against the Elks and a few notables on Thursday's lineup starting on the offense at QB will be Matthew Schiltz. He'll be making his third straight start and will look to have another solid game just like he did against the Red Blacks where he went 19 for 26 through for 233 yards and he even ran for another 30. Receiver Terry Godwin will be a game time decision for this game at receiver and Tyreek McAllister one of those big stories to come out of last week's game will once again fit into the receiver core and on that special teams he will be the kick returner on the other side of the ball on the defense Stavros Katzentonis will be in at safety for his second straight start and Jared Hewitt will also be making the start at nose tackle so virtually the same roster we saw against the Red Blacks one of the guys who made a huge impact in that Red Blacks game on defense is Chris Edwards and Chris spoke to me about the game he had last week and how to repeat that against the Edmonton Elks. All right, Chris, I wanted to talk about a couple plays from that Ottawa game. I haven't gotten to talk to you yet about. I just want to go through the interception you had. A crazy play. Maybe just talk me through that one. Uh, well, I was in the post on that play. And, um, as soon as I saw him lining up and doing what they was doing, I assumed that Masoli was going to try to throw a dig, you know, just from, the, from just from their formation. And he did, but he overthrew a high, so I was in the post. And they just tipped, and I caught the overthrow. And I tried to score, but I didn't have a lane. I didn't have a lane that looked good to me, so I just went out of bounds. And then perhaps maybe a game-saving play at the end, that tackle at the very end on the two-yard line with Crum. Just talk me through that play. When did you realize he was running the ball? Yeah, because it was actually a receiver right by me that kind of looked open. So I was relaying to him, and as I looked back, I saw the quarterback running, but I didn't really notice if he was past the line of scrimmage or not until he started moving faster. And that's when I just broke and laid my body out. And, it all worked out for us. And now you're playing against the team you used to play for, the Edmonton Elks, coming up here on Thursday. A little bit about playing against them and what it's like to return to Edmonton. Uh, it's going to be good returning to Edmonton. That was the first team I ever played for out here. But, um, you know, it's a business trip. Going out there to get a win, you know, try to get rolling, get our second win. So I feel like it should be a good game. We really prepared, you know, got a good scheme in place. So, you know, it should be good. And the defense played perhaps their best game of the season against Ottawa. What do they need to do as a whole to, to continue that play here in Edmonton and shut down the offense? We just got to keep building, keep being disciplined, keep getting more physical, just be more assignment sound. You know, trust the guy next to you. If everybody do their job, things will work out. Plus, we need to keep getting takeaways. Takeaways is big. They help the offense. So we got to go to get a lot of takeaways this week. That was Chris Edwards. Now another guy on defense who is looking to repeat last week's performance against the Elks is Malik Carney. And I spoke to him about what needs to be done in this game tomorrow night. Four tackles in that Ottawa game. It seemed like everyone on defense was doing something out there, making big plays. Why do you think you were able to read that offense so well? Uh, everyone's, you know, just doing their part. You know, uh, it really, it really doesn't matter about the, you know, the individual stats. The most important stat is the team win. So that's what I'm grateful for. And now you head to Edmonton here on Thursday. What does this defense need to do to contain Cornelius in that offense? Uh, same thing, man. Building cage, building walls, hit quarterback, uh, stop the run, and uh, just playing together, playing for one another. And now you've had a very short turnaround. I've been talking to guys about, you know, the couple, just a couple of days of practice. How does that affect maybe your preparations for a game when it's so close to the last game you just played against Ottawa? Yeah, uh, you know, we make it more mental, uh, you know, mental reps, uh, recovery, getting in a hot tub, cold tub, contrast, taking care of your bodies to prepare and uh, be ready for the game. 
And then just what does this need, team need to do on Thursday to get the victory here? Same thing, man, consistency. Continue to build brick by brick, day by day, game by game, and uh, you know we we'll end up where we want to be. That was Malik Carney. Now for David Beard, this will be a true homecoming. Beard is from Sherwood Park, Alberta, went to school at the University of Alberta, and then played the first seven seasons of his CFL career for the Edmonton Elks before being traded to the Ticats late last season. Beard spoke about returning home and more. David, you're making the return to Edmonton, a team you played for, and the place you grew up, Alberta. Just a little bit on going back to Edmonton and playing against some old teammates. Yeah, I mean, it's obviously a familiar familiar space, um, so there's a pause there, but I mean, ultimately it's kind of, it's old colors, it's kind of sitting in the closet for uh, 10 years from now, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's a good good spot, familiar with it, and uh, it should be a fun fun game, looking forward to it. Will you have some family or some friends going down to the game that a little closer to home? Yeah, of course, yeah, I got some family in town, and um, yeah, my wife's side of the family is from the area, and so it's great, it'll be, it'll be good to connect with them a little bit after the game, and yeah, that'll be That'll be the fun part. So, now playing against them, what does this team need to do to protect Schultz against that defense? Yeah, well, I mean, Jones kind of brings it all. Um, he's got a, a reputation around the league and bringing in a lot of different stuff. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna be making sure we get our IDs correct, um, get after uh, yeah, their secondary, and uh, make sure we take care of the line of scrimmage uh, first and foremost. So yeah, it'll be it'll be it'll be good. Um, they uh, they've got a lot to offer defensively, so. We're, we're excited to kind of get after it. The O-line had a, had a solid game against the Red Blacks. What does the team need to do to continue to gel and, and, and continue that, that play? Yeah, well, I mean, just as you said, um, gelling and getting some chemistry going is, is obviously really important. And that's something that kind of goes week to week, day to day, truthfully. Um, so if we can kind of stay the course, um, stay healthy, uh, keep building on what we've, we've done so far and stack it up, then that's, that's the bottom line, right? Like that's... That'll be the key to success, so. That was David Beard as he prepares for his return to Edmonton. Now, James Butler is a guy that Ticats fans have gotten to know very well over the last two months since he joined the team, and he's impossible to miss on the football field, doing everything he can to make an impact on that offense. I wanted to get to know JB a little bit better, not only to see what he's all about on the field, but off the field as well. All right, I'm joined <laughs> now by James Butler. James, you seem to be a focal point on the offense so far this season for the team. How do you feel you've been able to adjust to, to coming to Hamilton and now to being around this locker room now that we're in week six? Just just trying to do the best I can to, uh, to, to you know, to, to try to be the best role at whatever whatever role I am given. So that, that's really my biggest goal, just, just continue to just try to be me. Now, I wanted to give Ticats fans a little bit of a deeper dive into you, not only just what you've been doing on the field lately, but maybe just coming to the CFL and your journey here. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to start in your college career. Yeah. You, you make your way from college, and, and you spent a little bit of time in the NFL. What uh -huh. was the jump like when you went from college to pro? Uh, it, was it was a tough one. I had a, I had a, a wild uh, transition, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I wasn't even a priority for agent I was, a, I was a tryout guy you know what I'm saying so it was just like hey you yeah you're sure you can come to rookie, rookie camps I went to two of those and you know it was a grind you know what I'm saying not being a big big school uh you know guy and stuff like that or a drive pick or a priority for agent so it's kind of just having to just always earn it as you go so that's what I'm, I'm used to doing now one thing fans know about you is you're you're a running back, but you can play like a receiver. You can block, you know, you can do it all. Is, is that always been a part of your game, just to be good at every aspect of the offense? I would say, like, when I was a little kid, I, all I wanted to do was just run with the ball. And But, like, my first ever uh, high school, uh, not high school, like, Pop, Pop Warner coach was uh, was big on the more you can do. And uh, my best friend, Justin, he was my fullback. You know, he was always a great blocker. And then, you know, he would get the ball sometimes and I would have the lead block. And, like, I, I just – I was not trying to block. I was just not into it. <laughs> but um, but but he's the one who told me, like, hey, if you want to run the ball, you got to be able to block. And then, obviously, you got to be able to, to catch the ball too. So, like, he was the first person to really introduce me to, to being a, bl a blocking back. So. So was football always something like since you were just a little kid that 
you were like, I want to be a pro football player? Or did you have did you have maybe other goals growing up? I mean, I wanted to play basketball, but then I after like fifth grade, I didn't grow no more, so I knew that was that was kind of out. But uh, I just grew up just playing tag, mm-hmm. and I never wanted to be it. So like, you know, what I'm saying <laughs> that was my biggest thing. I never wanted to be it. So it was like we played a tag where it was like catch one, catch all. So like, if they tagged you, you were it with that person. So okay. like, it was just like it, it turned into like twenty people versus one. So like, that's where I got all my moves from, just being a little kid playing tag, never wanting to be it. So that maybe that could be a new drill they introduce here at the Cats practice. Get some uh, get sure. some of those big guys chasing after you. So one thing I wanted to talk to you about, you're an avid reader. Uh-huh. And and you read a lot of books. Yes, is sir. is that always been you? Is that something you've always No, done? no. So I just got into that probably COVID. I I could like I know all my high school and college professors are gonna not believe me, but I didn't read a book throughout college or high school. I was not into it. I was a I was a big spark note guy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm yep. saying? But um but COVID, you know, COVID happened and kind of slowed the world down. And then I just kind of got into reading. I didn't want to sit on my phone all day or, or, you know, just watch Netflix. So I just kind of got into reading. That's when I first read, like, my first couple books. But this year, I have a goal of reading a book a month or just reading 12 books total. I know it's kind of tough now during the season, but I just finished my my six books. So wow. I'm excited, yeah. That's great. That's six more books than I've read this year. So, <laughs> so that's that's impressive. So, what kind of books are you reading? What are you into? So, I, I like I like all type of books. I like uh, obviously I like the, the self help books. Um, I've I've kind of got into a fiction book. I, only fiction books I really would say that I'm into right now is kind of The Alchemist. But I like books like like that. But uh, like I just read The Power of Now. I read all. I like I like um obviously books about love. I think those are really cool. I love books like about relationships and kind of learning yourself, and then also like books about like meditating and and, and healing like your your inner child. And and that's one thing I was gonna ask you about. You you do meditation. Mm-hmm. Do you is that so, is that a game day ritual? Is every that an day. every every day thing? No, it's every day every morning. It's kind of like. Some people wake up and drink a cup of coffee. I wake up and I meditate for like five to ten minutes. Mm-hmm. So that that's, that's usually what I do. And you find that kind of just gives you a little. It kind of, it kind of, it kind of. Sorry, it kind of like gives me a reset. Kind of mm-hmm. puts like puts like uh like everything on pause. You know what I'm saying? Because after that, obviously, real world starts. Got to go to work. Got to, you know what I'm saying? Got practice. Got all the all the things to think about. That is the only time I can seriously like be present and where I'm at and just focus on my breath and and just kind of be be still. So if I if I ever need to to calm down a bit, I'll maybe I'll come to you get some meditation lessons. One hundred percent. I want to talk about now just your experience when you came into the CFL. Mm-hmm. Um, what was it like the transition of going from America to to Canada, whether it be on the field or just everyday life? It was tough. Uh, a lot of people don't know I spent twenty nineteen in Saskatchewan and I didn't make the team. Mm-hmm. And I remember leaving that training camp and like obviously like obviously Moro who's doing his thing over there, that's my dog. We were roommates, you know what I'm saying? We were both competing for like that uh that that roster spot but um you know I just didn't make enough plays and I remember leaving Canada and I'm like well that game's just not for me like it's, you know what I'm saying I'm just I'm just not the Canada back you know what I'm saying it's just it's a different type of back and I, mm-hmm. I remember after that I thought like my career was over because I was like you know what I'm saying? I just got cut from the Raiders just got cut from Canada like there was no other like leagues back then to really to really yeah. uh to, to make it shake but um but no but then uh Growing a little older, maturing, you know what I'm saying? Having another season with the Raiders and coming back and, and, and doing the X, I feel like the XFL kind of like rejuvenated like kind of my love for football again. Yeah. But um, coming back, obviously a lot more mature after the COVID year uh, with the opportunity to BC is just like I was a lot more mature, a lot more open to the idea than uh, than I was like um, – uh, back then in SAS. I kind of tell young guys now, like, you know, it's so easy to get caught up in, like, being young. Like, okay, Canada's just a stepping stone. Like, I'm just going to come here, get filmed, go back to the league. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you're so focused on the future, you're not actually in where you at right now. So that's kind of where I could, like, look back now on my time in SAS. I was just like, okay, I'm just going to stay here for a little while, then I'm going to get back to the league. That's my goal. You know what I'm saying? I'm young. I can, I, I can do that. But, um, but obviously growing a little older, I just kind of, like, I learned to you got to be where your feet at. I like yeah. to like to tell myself that. But now I love Canada. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I have I have I have the great I have the greatest time like uh I started singing in BC called like Tourist DG uh Tourist DJB. So I would just go <laughs> and be the biggest tourist exploring and, like, everything. Exploring, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So now I even explore out here. So so I haven't had a chance to get into any waterfalls yet cuz I've been a little busy, but there's this super cool like 
like Lake, obviously uh, Lake Ontario, right by my house. So I always mm-hmm. go there, read my books, I meditate there sometimes, just journal. Yeah. But um, but yeah, and uh, like like I said, I, I really love Canada. I love that now I have the opportunity to explore Ontario. So I think that's really cool. I call every every year my Canadian World Tour. <laughs> yeah. So, so You're on both to, sides of the yeah, country, you know, from you know BC over here. So every away game is is another stop on the Canadian World Tour. So it's pretty cool. And now I just want to talk about your first experience. This isn't long ago, but when you first came to Hamilton, yeah. you experienced the city in Ontario. You talked mm-hmm. about seeing some stuff around Ontario. Yeah. What was it like? What was your initial impressions? And what has it been like now being here for a little while? It, it reminds me of home, being a Midwestern guy. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? It kind of uh, just gives me that like super gritty, super grimy um, feel, which I like. You know what I'm saying? It's just like uh, it's just the type of player I grew up around, type of players I, I looked up to. Like You know what I'm saying? Just being a Midwest guy and being in the cold and playing cold games and stuff like that and just kind of like that grind mentality that you kind of get just being in the city alone, not even just, you know, with the team. So yeah. I, I, I really like it. I, and it reminds me of home because I'm right uh, close to home. So my mom can come to more games. It's a lot easier if I get up here. So, yeah, so I'm excited about it. And now the game coming up here on Thursday. You've been tremendous. It seems like every game this season. What do you need to do to continue this strong play and, and to get a win here in Edmonton? Just, just, just continue to play together. You know what I'm saying? Like I, I pride myself on just, just trying to be the spark, at whatever that is. You know what I'm saying? If that's blocking, that's catching, that's running the ball, that's, you know, talking guys up. You know what I'm saying? Because I know I'm big. I'm not a big vocal guy, but I, I know like sometimes talking to other, talking up another guy kind of gets me excited. So just, just playing my role the best I can. You know what I'm saying? Against, against a good Edmonton team. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. That, 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 that plays better than their, that plays better than their record. So sure. just, um, and. And it's not it's not not an easy place to play, you know. Obviously, playing in BC, I played there a couple of times, but um, just playing playing my role the best I can, and 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 and, and keeping the energy up. That's that's really gonna be the biggest thing, cause I love away games, cause it's kind of like you guys all come on a plane. It's kind of like you versus everybody, you yeah. versus the city, the province, the stadium. You know what I'm saying? Another team, so. I love, I love those feels. Also, I want to talk about my number. I never got a chance okay. to talk about. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Let's hear it. Yes. Yeah, so my number. So I remember. Um, in high school, so I wore number nine, and like I was supposed to be number twenty, like my college number. But in high school, my junior year, I lost my my grandmother, my my junior. I lost my grandma my junior year. I didn't play my junior year. So my senior year, I was supposed to be twenty five, but I lost her. I lost I was supposed to be twenty four, but I lost her uh, June May twenty fifth. So I wore twenty five in honor for her. And then huh. this past year. I this year yeah, I just lost my 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 grandfather March 9th so, so that's where I wear number 9 it's not just that's it. I didn't want to sit cool as single digit but I, I wear it to, to honor my granddad so. Well, I think you're doing a great job of doing that. You've had an incredible season, and, and we're looking forward to seeing you on Thursday night in Edmonton. Thanks for joining me, JP. Appreciate it. That was James Butler. Incredible what he's done to get to this point in his career, and really awesome of him, really, to share that story with me, the reason for choosing the number nine, and just an all-round awesome dude and a great guy to talk to. James Butler and the rest of the guys I spoke to today will look to improve to 2-3 and three on the season tomorrow night when they make their way to Edmonton to take on the Elks. Game time is at 9 o'clock Eastern Time, and you can get all your coverage right here on the Ticats Audio Network. That's all the time for me today. I want to thank James Butler, David Beard, Malik Carney, and Chris Edwards for being on the show today, and I want to thank you for listening to Ticats today. Today.